government side gave us the extreme soft stance saying that they won't really make them, they won't always be maneuvered, we won't teach them you should always do that, but sometimes you do that. Recognize that that just eliminates basically all of the benefits that they're talking about. We think that, yeah. So what does opportunity stand for? First of all, we what we're going to teach is we're going to teach probably, we're going to, we're, we want to teach the reality of what's happening inside society. We're going to say that there are some sexist parts, but there also are some changes that are occurring and how, what kind of things that you could get. For example, we'll probably teach about how there is a wage difference or how it'll be difficult for you, for example, to access to maternity leave, but we won't just say everything is so bad. <laughs> we'll also tell you about how it's there, how there is, has been change inside society, how it's more easier for women to, talk, for example, talk about sexual harassment, how corporations are being more sensitive about these issues because of Me Too movement. We're going to tell them the holistic image of what's happening in society and second of all, we're very happy for women to encourage women to actually stand up and voice out the problem that they're talking about, to collectivize and identify the problem that they have with other women so they could fight back to what the problems that they're facing. So in my speech, I'm mainly gonna talk about two things. First, about how the exaggeration about what government's teaching actually discourage women to obtain the things that, the, to obtain, obtain what they want. Second of all, how in government side, we're actually um, by, by teaching individuals to maneuver, we're actually perpetuating the current toxic sexist norm. Thirdly, how it's going to be better on our side of the house. So first of all, about the exaggeration about society, about reality, right? Because what we need to see is in government side, you're going to put, talk about how the rampant sexism is happening in society. So what teachers are probably going to teach you is that you're always going to be discriminated when you go to society. People will not value you because of your work that you've done, but always devalue you because you're a woman. You will not get promotions. You'll never get the same wages. You're probably going to be sexually harassed by your boss. And Point. probably, no, thank you. You're going to get minus 80%, 80 percent, 80 points on your entrance exam in university. We're going to tell them about how government is going to tell them that that is a reality of society. Why is this extremely harmful? First of all, because we women are going to internalize victimhood, right? Women are going to think that we're always victim in society and we could never win against the society that's created by men, right? They're going to have no motivation to actually no, thank you, for example, obtain higher education because they know they're going to be discriminated in entrance exam and they can't be a doctor. So no matter how much how much I study, I can't get inside. They're not going to participate in movements or protesting on the streets or they're, not, they're going to give up their dreams and rather obtain your gender roles or they're going to be okay with marrying a man that they don't really want to even though they want to, pr to prioritize their dream but they know that that's not possible or they're not going to apply for jobs because they think they're going to be discriminated or even if they do, like they, if they know that their male counterpart is getting more wages, they're probably going to give up because they know that if I speak up, I'm probably going to be laid off and I can't talk about it. No, thank you. We think this kind of demotivizing, of how you're literally discouraging women to actually obtain the things that they want and we think that that kind of mindset creating in women will heavily actually affect the decision making process within them. But second of all, we think that misandry is going to be created, right? Recognize what they're going to teach is probably all the harms that you are getting is because of men, and probably men are the root cause of all the problems inside society. But recognize that's not always true. Sometimes there's legal structures inside society that's pro that's the causing the problem, or simply there's not enough laws being enforced. But when you create this narrative of probably all men are actually bad, and we see like all men are shit, hashtag those kind of things actually trending in Twitter, what's going to happen is you're going to divide men and women, right? All women are going to demonize male as a root cause of all their problems. The reason why this is extremely harmful is because if you want, for example, policies to support women, or if you want changes in laws or norms in society, you need to get men on your side to actually support those kind of policies. We think that kind of division between gender is actually worse off, is, is extremely harmful to actually get some kind of practical changes. Second of all, what's gonna happen in gov side? We think the, the sexist norm is gonna be perpetuated. First, because women aren't just gonna, they're just simply not gonna talk about it, right? They don't know that there are other options to actually talk about them. For example, what kind of options I have in the court case? What kind of law, what kind of rights am I entitled to, right? Women don't even know how to talk about and report this. The point is that they could have been able to get, for example, changes in corporations if they told their boss or if they told the, the problems inside your news outlet or something like that. But they absolutely don't do that. And, the, and we think this is extremely harmful directly to women, to the women who are actually receiving those kind of harms. Second of all, we create a norm that you just don't speak, that you don't talk up, right? When you see uh, your senpais or you see presidents not talk, doing anything about that, it creates an atmosphere in society that you shouldn't talk about anything, that women should just brush it off and that you should have a tough skin, right? And the more we actually keep this norm or the more government teaches it, we strengthen the norm of not being to talk up, we strengthen the norm of women not being able to voice out, and we think that's extremely harmful for women who want to speak about these issues and get some change. I'll take you in a moment. Thirdly, we think that males are gonna take 
advantage of this culture, right? Because men know that women don't do anything. Once, like, for example, a male, like, um, does sexual harassment on the train and he knows that the woman won't speak up. He's obviously going to do that every single time because he knows he could get away with it, right? We could see this in, for example, in Hollywood. Harvey, the only reason why Harvey Weinstein was able to do sexual harassment for decades is because he knew he had the power and he knew women won't talk about it, right? They talk about how we could prepare women for it. What's the, what's the point of preparing when you're actually perpetuating the norm which women have to endure all this kind of suffering? We're creating a bad cycle and we think that's, we, that in Gulf side, they're creating that bad cycle, women don't speak up, men think they could get away with it, and nothing solves. By teaching how to maneuver around sexual offenses and harassment, they can report to the hotline or equity officer, police officer, or whatever. Why do you think those individuals necessarily silence their voices okay. when they know how to maneuver around The point is that society needs to know that these things are happening, right? We think that if you just call on a hotline, other women won't see those kind of problems. This goes on to the second point about collectivization, right? Yeah, yeah. Collectivization doesn't happen when you just see statistics. You see it when you actually see your other counterparts, your friends speaking up about it. That's what encourages you to go on movements, right? We have leaders like Malala, or like, or like Hillary Clinton, but we think only these people are successful if people around them support them, right? And we think that it is only those kind of changes. We need people who support the leaders, and we think that we, why individual women speaking out, and when you can relate to that person, we think at least that changes. But last, um, and thirdly, we think, uh, secondly, in our side of the house, we think that it, not only does it collectivize women, because women are feel more encouraged to talk about this, it also creates a big deterrence to male. Because male know that women are going to fight back, right? They're afraid, for example, of losing their job if they have a sexual harassment suit. Companies are afraid of their reputation by society calling them that they're not woke enough, or how they're not actually doing anything about it, and their products are not being sold, right? We think that kind of deterrence actually makes corporations or governments actually create laws. Like we see Me Too was successful in making anti-sexual harassment laws within some corp some production companies and even in normal like in companies as well, right? Or we could see the Black Lives Matter movement. That actually shed the light and it made like, for example, police officers have body cameras. We think these kind of things actually creates a direct benefit to the woman, right? We're not just talking about social collective things. We're talking about how women could directly get those kind of benefits for those reasons, we think our side of the house protects women much more better. Very happy to close.